terms of what it has always been, but in terms of what it must be. My name is Sakaja Johnson. I am a Kenyan born in this city. There is no part of this country that is less Kenya than any other part of this country. Let us return hope to this country. The joy of a mother is when you see your child progressing. I choose not to look at Nairobi in terms of what it has always been, but in terms of what it must be. My name is Sakaja Johnson. I am a Kenyan born in this city. There is no part of this country that is less Kenya than any other part of this country. Let us return hope to this country. The joy of a mother is when you see your child progressing. I choose not to look at Nairobi in terms of what it has always been, but in terms of what it must be. My name is Sakaja Johnson. I am a Kenyan born in this city. There is no part of this country that is less Kenya than any other part of this country. Let us return hope to this country. The joy of a mother is when you see your child progressing. I choose not to look at Nairobi in terms of what it has always been, but in terms of what it must be. My name is Sakaja Johnson. I am a Kenyan born in this city. There is no part of this country that is less Kenya than any other part of this country. Take a moment and imagine. Imagine a city of order. Imagine a city where all the rules are clear and everybody abides by them. Imagine a city of dignity that every citizen feels like their own part of the city, that there is no second class citizen. Imagine a city where any idea or any opportunity has a chance to thrive. Imagine a city where no doctor has to lose the life of a patient because of the lack of equipment. Imagine a work in Nairobi. How does it look like to you? Imagine a capital where you can walk at night, where there's a 24-hour economy, a capital that is clean, that is bright, with lights. Imagine a city that you'd be proud to invite anyone from anywhere in the world. Imagine a capital and a county where every child born has an equal shot at life, an opportunity for a better tomorrow. Growing up in Nairobi from my eyes as a child, it was beautiful. A simple life in Gara. Nairobi was the green city under the sun. My dad said Nairobi was working. It was a place of opportunities. Life here was just beautiful. One of the most horrific members in the 11th parliament in the National Assembly. In my mind, I was thinking, how did a young man get this far? He is um, extraordinary when it comes to numbers. He's able to connect at heart level, which is not what most leaders do. Whenever I see him even debating over the TV, I write a message. Ah, my people, I can see you. He's going uh, open, uh, honest individual. The robustness with the of his ideas. Grew up from Gara, Nabado Anangara. Someone we all know very well, someone I admire. Nairobi is a very special city, and Jay gets it. This gentleman called Sakaja. Let us return hope to this country. Yani sucks, I'm a same as you. My name is Sakaja Johnson. I'm the current senator of Nairobi. I'm a Kenyan born in this city of Nairobi in the mid 80s in Ngara Wood. Last born, two elder sisters, one two years older, another one six years older. And uh, we had a nice, quiet family. My ethnicity is Nairobi. I am Nairobi. Hi, my name is Anne-Marie. I'm Evelyn. And we're his sisters. We're Jay's sisters. <laughs> Better known as Sakaja. What was early childhood? 
dad and mom had a very interesting way of bringing up children. My dad has been a very strong pillar. When I was very young, he used to call me Prime Minister. I, I didn't know what it means. He used to say, Sir Johnson, Prime Minister. You know, he'd come home uh, late at night, wrap at the door, and he would not rest until I have, he has called me and I've come to remove his shoes. And he, he, he raised me through affirmation. In a sense, my dad just really instilled that, um, the truth that your voice matters. I think you're brilliant. And he just kept calling him, sir, I can actually count on my fingers the number of times I actually heard him being addressed by his own name. Mm. You know, you're a great man. Where is the great man? And this is a baby. I think my dad's incitement, calling me prime minister, made me get interested in leadership. When I was eight years old, I said very clearly, I want to be president. And I kept saying it. Because I told him there's no prime minister in Kenya, but I want to be president. And so he said, okay, you can be. And I kept saying that, and I've always <laughs> said that. I think the reality of politics then gives you a different picture about what it takes to become president. The first time I met Sakaja was when he came for the interview, that is 1990, in August. Then, 1991, he was now admitted and was brought to my class, that is one cross in Akakan Primary School. You could not force Sakaja to do this. It was just coming up naturally. And if you want to know what type of a child you have is when you have PE, friendliness. So I caught it from Sakaja because he was ever friendly to others. I met Sakaja at Aga Khan. He was my prefect, I was the class teacher. Very active in class, ever putting up his hand and answering and asking a lot of questions. He was also very nerdy, so he's the kind of boy who kila mara akona kitabu tu, anasoma tu kitabu, yeah. whether it's an encyclopedia, I think he even had a dictionary, like he would always be having a book. And for that reason, he was very good in English. We used to call him the mobile dictionary. I prepared him in leadership qualities as a class teacher by giving him many responsibilities. Slow learners. He was ready to go and help them because he was kind. That is leadership qualities. Apart from being a prefect, I remember he was a footballer. So one time, very early in the morning during preps, he played football in class. The master, Mr. Karuga, walked in, a prefect playing football during prep time, and he got very upset. And uh, he made a you know, show of me during the parade, and he called me and he said, how can this people be playing like this? And he demoted me, took, took away my prefect's tie and badge, and of course, caned us thoroughly. But in less than uh, seven hours, all the teachers had gone to his office and said, boss, if this guy is not a prefect, we will not run this school. Can you reinstate him? Please, we will deal with him. <laughs> so they had to reinstate me because this kid is too influential over the others. So he has to be leading them in the right, in the right direction. And that's how I got reinstated as a prefect and later became the head boy. It was just a mistake like any other. He was just a boy. I remember leading a, a demonstration when I was seven years old. Um, at Njega Karume Flats because we used to be separated between us and the next flats, which were, I think initially it was the same estate and then they put a fence. So the Asians were living on one side and the Africans were living on the other side. The Asian side was very clean. Their walls were white, they had flowers and the kids were riding nice bikes and us, our walls were dirty. The estate wasn't kept well. And so I told the kids we deserve better. And so we, we wrote some placards and uh, we, we did, a, we, you know, we protested and said, no, this place, and our parents were very embarrassed. And there was a change. Uh, from then on, you know, we saw how garbage was being collected and uh, there were duties shared between different blocks on how to keep the place clean. And we influenced that. Other than academics, Johnson was very good in debating. It's very interesting, in uh, 1998, there was a children's debate by UNICEF, environmental children's debate, and we, were, we picked different countries. I was representing South Africa, hosted by the UN, and I was the best speaker in the world in that debate. The head girl that time, Sonia Gill, was the second best speaker and the best female speaker. So it was both of us from Aga Khan. He was talking about the school standing up and shining. That's what he's talking about, Kenya standing up. And shining today. There is enough in this country for everybody's need, but not enough for everybody's greed. And uh, Honda Bonyanze awarded me. Um, that time he was the Minister for Environment. Now, years later, we'd meet in Parliament. And I looked for that photo and I showed him. I said, you know, this is me you are rewarding when I was in class eight. Now we're in Parliament together. 
I think one of us shouldn't be in this house, <laughs> either you or me. <laughs> one of us should uh, should give way to the other. And we keep joking about that. Unfortunately, he lost he lost his life after the subsequent election. He he got unwell, but uh, we had very close moments with him. It was during service with my church, AIC, where I met Johnson Sakaja. It was very easy to identify him because of his giftedness and talent and the kind of spirit that he had. We referred to him as a youth principal. And since then, up to date, we have never had that title again repeated. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. For my mom, I was a sunny, sunny boy, because uh, I was a last born and a only boy. She had had difficulties because she'd had miscarriages before. And so for her, I was like a special boy. I was born a premature kid. So I was, we had a very special bond. Unfortunately, she passed on very, very when I was young, when I was nine years old. She'd been unwell, uh, but of course you don't expect that the person is going to, to yeah. die. So that was difficult for all of us. She had called us to hospital. Well, she asked that we be called. She couldn't talk at that time. My sister walked in fast and I walked in. She lit up and she kept doing this. She kept doing this. I don't know what it meant. I'm sure it was not for Kenya. <laughs> but she kept doing peace. And so I had to keep remembering everything. And, and, and yeah, a lot of those have held me on through. And because of that, I became very protective of my sisters. Things became really difficult. Especially financially. Yeah. A lot of the money went into a medical cost and then she didn't make it. What that then meant was that um, even the house where we lived in, because that was a government house, we had to move out, we moved to Imaradaima. I mean, life just shifted very drastically. We didn't always have money. There were times we didn't have food to eat because dad was yeah. struggling, he was doing his best. Yeah. But he finds himself in a very new, very new territory. Those days there are no mobile phones, so it's not like you can send a text and say, "Okay, Dad, dinner chakula is over," or whatever it is. Ni nipoleta kutoka biyeti na kujamara ni kanga biashara. Sakaja wa mkuja wa kani pata apa na baba ke na sister ke. Tu alikuwa anaishi my neighbor, so they are very close to me. Most of the time, I joined to come as his taka and append a chips, Babaga, wait, can I go madich for chips, gula, chips, gula, and go and watch a key, upper quang, but his taka and as a guja, a chiquiap, and to Missouri, discipline, and I shimmer. Eventually, we didn't have rent to pay and we had to be evicted. We had a relative who graciously uh, took us in and gave us their servant's mm, quarter. Yeah. And uh, Sakaja was actually the best cook of what we used to call Mchele Manyanga. So yeah. Mchele Manyanga was the meal we could afford most of the time. So it's sort of like a kapilao that is fake because it has nothing else, no meat, yeah. no meat or anything. And he was really good at cooking it. In high school, I was not in a debate team, but whenever they would face a big challenger, they would look for me um, our school captain then, Jimmy Mwangagi and uh, Hunter Josiah, to represent the school when they do staff contests. I remember Miss Mganga. Miss Mganga asked me to go for um, public speaking. When well, you're given a topic and five minutes to prepare, and you can't speak without looking at any notes. So the first time I did it, uh, that was in Form 2, I failed miserably, I think at the zonal level. The next year she insisted, she said, you must do this, this is your thing. So I made it for the nationals. And I remember that time uh, during music festivals, everybody stays in school because it's during the holiday. But for public speaking, you can't stay because there's nothing to rehearse. So she told me, go read newspapers. And then on this day, we meet at KCC. Took a matatu, came to town, changed into uniform, and I got my topic. The topic was my country, Kenya. And so I thought, what do I say? What do I say? I wrote a quote and whatnot. And so I, my hand was full of scribbling, you know, scribbles. And I remember when I stood up there, I said, John Fitzgerald Kennedy once said, ask not what your country will do for you, but what you will do for your country. And I never unclenched my fist. I spoke. And when I finished, there was a standing ovation. I couldn't believe it. So I went, I was awarded. I remember going back home, I was in the Matatu. 
saying, do these guys know I'm number one in something in the country? Do they have an idea I was number one? A year later, we were at a meeting um, of prefects. And this military guy stands up and says, last year, my hope for Kenya was renewed because I had a young man talking about Kenya. And what he told me made me believe there'll be a future. And he quoted me. And so after the function, I told him, boss, it was me who you are referring to. He's like, yes. And he gave me 2,000 books. 2,000 shillings was a lot of money. I was very rich in school, but I was so inspired that this military general could remember something I'd said a year before about, about Kenya. We laughed, we cried, we did all of that together. But at least I can tell you, Sakaja knows what it means to be evicted, to know that people are coming, giving notices that, you know, your housing is going to be closed. Of course, it was not very comfortable for all of us. And there's one of our aunt and uncle who actually took him in. I was called to the University of Nairobi. I was also called to, um, to do civil engineering, but wanted to do something different. And at that time, we were running a cyber cafe in town. So it was an interesting time where I was trying to balance, you know, that. I'm trying to pay my school fees, paying for my servant's quarter because I was taking an SQ. That time I'd, I'd moved out from my uncle's place. And then now later, since I had a small income, I got the next one. But I said, you know, me and my sisters, I'm going to move them. And by the time I was in fourth year, I got an, an apartment at Yai. Now we're moving to an apartment. So imagine we are trying to, we're moving on now. And then he brings Mukokotenis to Hamisha us. Imagine. Yeah, these guys who I knew who push Mukokoteni. I, but they I still know them. Uh, they're normally around Halingam area. I said, Kuja ni mtu Me and my sister looked at them and were like, okay, there's no way. Umeleta wezi kutu hamisha. Sasa wezi watajua penye tunaishi and everything that we have. Because <laughs> yeah. it's all going to be on there, mkokoteni. They deserve to earn something. And he told us, mm -hmm. if this is the attitude you have, what future does Kenya have? Like, who will believe in these young people? Who will yeah. give this guy with them kokoteni a job if you yeah. are the one who cannot give them a job? So better believe it. The guy with them kokoteni is the one who ambitioned us. People have used big movers and have lost things. Nothing got lost, nothing got broken. And I think for them, they were just in shock. He taught me a lesson on just taking people at chance. face value. See, lazima mtu or, you know, you know, in a certain way for you to trust them, that kila mtu akona something good within them, and everybody has got potential. No one chooses to be in that in that station in life that they find themselves in and just give them a chance, just a chance. The hallmark of my leadership will be how many other people I give an opportunity to. Because if I give you an opportunity, you will be better than me, you know? I think that is the hallmark of leadership. So he's transitioned into politics. First, we were not surprised. Were you surprised? I was not surprised. In He'd campus. been a student leader. Yes. My name is Lydia Mathia. I'm an advisor in the Ministry of Public Service, Gender, Senior Citizens Affairs, and Special Programs. I met Sakaja in uh, campus at the University of Nairobi when we were doing student politics. I was running for Sonu vice chair, and he was uh, running to be the first ever representative of parallel students in the Students' Union. You remember when he was campaigning and he would have posters, posters yeah. he got a suit, he posed for photos. The tagline was a paradigm shift. You know, in the university we call parallel uh, students, we call them para. So he used the word para, then put dime, and then it was paradigm shift. So it was such an iconic uh, slogan. So we all took notice of how clever uh, that slogan was, and he won with an absolute landslide. That is where now somebody told me that there's a young man who is leading the youth campaign for President Kibaki. And this young man needs a driver who can later double up as his PA. And I said, of course, I'll take that job. And so I became Gatti's driver. He told me once in a while oh, I have two hours and I would drive that huge car to campus and guys are like, hey, look at this guy, what is he doing? So he started off as a driver, but by the time he was finishing, he was really at the core of the strategic team of Zana Kibaki. I personally found it very easy working with uh, Sakaja. In the constitution of Kenya today, the formula for boundaries delimitation, which is in Article 89, Clause 5, that is Sakaja's idea. John Krigler said that one of the things that need to be sorted out 
is the issue of uh, boundaries. He is absolutely good on numbers. I mean, you stop Sakaja asking uh, what are the numbers in these seven polling stations that you have picked randomly, and he will tell you the possibilities and how they have voted out in the past and how they are likely to vote in the future. That numbers thing was an immediate uh, attraction that stood out immediately. He is um, extraordinary when it comes to numbers. Uh, he was studying actuarial science at the time. The how boundaries are drawn also determine how people live. We brought him because he was capable. Because they couldn't agree, they said ODM should bring a consultant and PNU brings their own uh, consultant. So ODM brings Professor Adul, uh, the Vice Chancellor at Technical University. PNU brings this 23-year-old who has just some ideas. And it was the consensus from everybody, including the people on all the devices, that Sakaja came across as a, as a professional, as a, as a person who knew what he was saying. And his explanation of the issues around the delimitation of uh, boundaries and constituencies was among the best presentation we ever had. And so Professor Dole presents, I had seen his presentation, he presents the numbers. And then I'm called and I present numbers, but with a political mind and in political language. And he came back and said, you know what, just do what this young man is saying. And it is after that that Uru said, you know what, this, this guy must come work with me in treasury. And I, and I had no interest in going to work in treasury, but he insisted. And that is what led to formation of TNA. Because that time he was in Kano, and he told him, this Kano won't work in this election. I remember getting people like Dennis Itumbi, I found him on Facebook, I found another guy called James, people who now came and became Team Uhuru, which, which we started. 2013 elections were coming up. He told me this is the party that will form government in 2013, and you are the people that will deliver our candidates to State House. I'm looking and I'm like, us. We started the office, two of us. I remember we used to report to office at 5.30 a.m. Who does that? And uh, I used to do that 5.30 to 8 because I was then still working for Voice of America. So after two weeks, I had to resign from my job as an international correspondent based in Kenya and join Chakaja to start this fresh dream that only had one chair and had a green place like this. So the office could not even fit the two of us, the initial office that we had. So we had to sit outside on some green with our laptops and imagine. So we then compiled what we thought would do in a campaign. We were at that time uh, supporting the then uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, who was uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. Sakaja was very good with numbers, so he was the one who would do all the national numbers and uh, do different permutations of how maybe he would choose a running mate and things like that. Here comes a young man and uh, you know, robust with the uh, ideas, and uh, I was there that. Uh, he was saying, what do we call this party? And went to Uhuru and he said, let's call it National Alliance. And he said, no, NA, not applicable. And we thought, what do we call this? Because the abbreviation would have been NAP, which is like, oh, you guys want to go and take a nap. And then I said, no, let's add the article V, the National Alliance. TNA, it was very clear. We needed this young man to lead to be the chair of this party. He's our peer, but he's the chair. And actually, for some people in the team, they are much older than him. But the way Sakaja would command that boardroom, not with a fist, he would inspire the team so strongly. We are here because we know that together we can. We are here because we know that together we will. Join us in this journey, in the National Alliance, as we march towards the Kenya we believe in and the Kenya we deserve. Exit the Kenya African National Union. Enter the National Alliance. I recall the first time I noticed him is when he was uh, launching the TNA party and the speech he made and the way he looked that, uh, you know, statesman-like and then uh, we hear that he's just a young man and uh, in my mind I was thinking, how did a young man get this far to be able to be chair of a party that subsequently goes on and becomes the ruling party in the country? But when I finally met him, I realized why it was that it was him like that. Then came the nomination lists for the National Alliance. The list has to be taken and I've brought my name, but there's this group of people who had sat around, I will not mention their names, and they're like, no, remove that name of Sakaja, I should not be there. I said, what do you mean? Like, no, 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 if you want it, everyone will want it in the party. I said, but I had 
I think I've worked for it. I'm proud of the decision I made to nominate myself. <laughs> I would do it again. In politics, no one gives you space. The Bible says, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You must claim your space and take it. He found the solution even to get the right uh, party list uh, put in place. Remember, the party list had to have two people, had to have an older person and a younger person, an older person and a younger person, which is something, again, he's the one who had the champion. Timothy uh, 4.12, that says, do not let anyone look down upon you because you're young, but set an example to the believers in your speech, in your deed, in your actions. One thing that I really credit Sakaja with is that uh, he is the one who came up with the idea to have a national body responsible for employment affairs. National Employment Authority, near. It will not matter where you're from, um, who you know, uh, what is your tribe, but there'll be a fair shot, a fair opportunity for all the young people. We can help our young people get jobs locally, internationally, streamline courses people are being taught at university, put together skills matching with the private sector and employers, because for many young people, we're actually just postponing their unemployment by teaching courses that the market doesn't need. I brought legislation about the National Employment Authority, why we can actually make sure that these young people in Kenya and, and, and in Nairobi get a fair shot at life. Others, like the 30% procurement opportunities for young people, women and uh, persons with disability. I remember meeting some young people who came, I was at a restaurant and the guy said, look, my, your bill is on me and here is 100,000. I'm like, oh, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to bribe me? And said, no, because of the law you passed, I've been able to do business and I supply uh, certain things to the military as a young person. And I've been able to take my siblings through school. I've been able to buy a car. I've been able to run a business. So I was just thanking you. For me, I felt proud that I've changed someone's life. And I think there are many lives that have been changed. That was a high. One of my lowest moments was, uh, I think, December 18th, 2014, where there was a security laws uh, amendment being discussed. Very senior members turned into animals. People were fighting, throwing bottles at the speaker, throwing books at each other. And I stood up, despite being one of the youngest members, and I told them, We must respect the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, we must respect this house. So, Mr. Speaker, I urge you, and honestly, members, I'm urging you, with all humility, let us offer leadership at this point. We can decide to fight here until midnight, until morning, but the people of Kenya's hopes will be dashed. You are the hopes of these people. If we cannot sit down and agree, then there is no need why we are here. And we're able to calm down the temperatures. For me, that was a low, because parliament should never degenerate into violence. And I always believe politics is not an enmity. Parliament is a place to discuss different ideas and to see which one is the best for, for the people. And I said, politics is not enmity. The NASA legislators who were there before, led by Anthony Oluwaj of Madare and Ken O'Koth of Kibra, came back and there was a bit of a confrontation there. In fact, it was Senator Johnson Sakaja who stepped in to be compassionate to Anthony Oluwaj of Madare. Whether he is NASA or Jubilee, everybody deserves justice. You know, and we will work all together. If it's a labor today, if that happens to you, the same thing will happen. Because today we might laugh and say it's Babu Wino in NASA. Tomorrow it'll be me, or tomorrow it'll be your sister or your father. So what we're saying is that we will not allow misuse, misuse of the criminal justice system. You cannot fight somebody just because of a different political persuasion. I would not want a country where there are limits as to where you can go, as to who you can interact with because of just politics. In the run-up to 2017 election, we collapsed parties. TNA had been the biggest party. And that time, there were 12 other parties that we brought together in uh, Jubilee. I was the leader of strategy and uh, the communication and branding. Of course, I left party politics because now I had to vie. People said, ah, yo kitty, me pata munye. It was a direct fit. The Senate is more deliberative. You get more time to discuss an issue because we are fewer. 
so you can get more time for debate. You really can get deeper understanding of, of issues. So in our oversight role yeah. and even in legislating, again, I've also brought the highest number of bills in the Senate. Prompt payment bill, national disaster management bill, startup bill. Nairobi Senator Johnson Sakaj has defended the startup bill 2020 saying... Many people have uh, great innovations, but they're not patented or they don't have a trademark and they're not protected. That's why you're seeing Kyondo in Japan. You're seeing uh, Kikoi being done elsewhere, yet it is a Kenyan innovation. We have brought a bill that will provide the legislative framework to deal with issues of disaster so that it is not business as usual, especially in our urban areas and in our arid areas in this country. Being senator, you are the front seat and you get to understand the intricacies and the challenges and the opportunities that uh, the county government is facing while still interacting with the people. Of course, sometimes there are many expectations um, that are unrealistic because many people do not yet understand the difference between the role of the senator and that of the governor. And so they expect you to, you know, build hospitals and uh, build roads and whatnot. But that is not your work is legislative and representative as well as oversight. I've been able to go through audit reports um, to look at um, exit reports of the public service board to understand the HR issues, to understand the issues of water, uh, housing, the issues of markets and trade. And I'm proud that in the last uh, three years I've been ranked as the best performing senator in uh, the country, thrice by mzalendo.org. My high has always been when we've, you know, done interventions that have changed lives. I remember there's a time there was a huge demonstration in uh, Kasarani. The PSV operators are protesting the poor state of the Mwiki Kasarani Road. <laughs> Unfortunately, a young man had died in those protests. His name is Steve Nandwa, and may God rest his soul in peace. But we were able to sort out that issue. The road is still perfect, it's been done, and there's more to be done. I remember intervening on the issue of uh, the drivers of the digital taxis, and it's a fight we're still on. Um, but we've been able to make sure that even these companies know that our drivers must get at least value for the work they do. The lowest moment for me um, was when we had to deal with the issue of solar dam. Some people made money from that exercise. And, uh, you know, that money, I think, comes with a curse because it is of innocent lives. Doing a report on the plight of uh, our girls in Saudi Arabia and what they've been going through and uh, seeing now the government trying, you know, starting to implement the proposals we did, including safe houses, including the Musanid system, where we have traction of where each and every girl is stationed and where they stay because a hundred girls losing their lives in one country is nothing normal. It is completely unacceptable. It's a, it's a crisis. Earlier on last year, when I went to a primary school in Dagoreti, and uh, I was donating desks to this school because there had been vandalism after COVID, um, after schools were called back. And I give these kids desks, and we were chatting and laughing around, and they're like, oh, super senator. And I said, what do you guys want me to do for you? Normally, the kids would say, we want balls for sports or we want a school bus, when they're very ambitious, of course, I, can't, I don't have money for a school bus. But the kids said, we want lunch, we are hungry. And it had happened before at Kinyanjuri Road Primary School. That brought tears to my eyes, because these kids are like my kids. And by the time my child is telling you they want food, they're actually very hungry. And so that inspired me to seek out solutions. Because many kids, when they go to school, they have nothing back at home. Their parents are struggling. But if you give them a meal, attendance goes up to 100%. Many children, they don't have food. They leave school at 12.30 and they don't come back in the afternoon. And they're losing a third of their education. And even when they come tomorrow, they can't catch up with auto in the afternoon. Well, that's one of the things we've said we must do in Nairobi. We will feed our children. My highs have been, you know, standing our ground as a team of senators, including the fight for an equitable formula for revenue that takes into cognizance population of highly populated counties without unnecessarily, unnecessarily um, treating other counties like second grade counties. And we were able to demonstrate it. And I took members through each and every of those provisions. And I said, this is what, if it is a pure one man, one shilling, these are our counties should get. Nairobi should, be, should have been getting 27 billion. In fact, leave alone what they, they gave to us. Not every debate must be that there's a winner and a loser. You can always get a win-win situation. There is no part of this country that is less Kenya than any other part of this country.
that a fair shot at life is a prerogative of all of us and we look out for each other so just being each other's brother's keeper for me was a highlight of this senate that has passed we are here to announce that the kenya kwanza team will be fielding the honorable johnson sakaja as our candidate for governor in nairobi city county Mimi nataka niwafanyie kazi kama gavana wenu kwa unyenyekevu. Gavana ni Johnson Sakaja. I made a political decision um, to move to UDA that is led by the deputy president William Ruto who is running for president. Yes, we've had a long journey with the president Uhuru Kenyatta. I have a lot of respect for uh, the former prime minister Raila Odinga. If you give everybody an equal opportunity that you know whatever your child is raised in this country whether it is Nanyuki or it is Laikipia or it is Nairobi or it is Kisumu or it is Mandera your child will have the same shot at life as a child raised in any other part of the country we will have unity we will have that umoja that azimio la umoja that we're talking about if we sort out the economy so i have decided with a team that is focused mainly on economic resuscitation from the bottom up not bottom versus up it is from the bottom up i don't know how to put this but he's not about himself and that's been a frustration for me as his sister because i want to see him grow economically he's not ambitious for his own sake he's more ambitious for other people so you know that pressure people have when they are young for okay umenu no plot umejenga ume 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 that's going to frustrate you with him if that's what you're wanting him to do for himself because that's not what he's about a young man whose story of rejection captured social media attention about two months ago, attracting the likes of Nairobi Senator Johnston Sakaja to reach out, promising to stand with him. And Saturday, that promise was fulfilled. His tears of pain having been wiped out with a bride in waiting to say i do <laughs> a celebration of love having brought two strangers together in the most unexpected ways as a top up to the salary he will be earning from a job he landed from a well wisher to support his young family we wish the newest couple in town all the best and God's blessings. Mtu asiwahi darauliwa. Mtu awe ako nayo ama hana ni Mungu ndo anapeana. Nimelelewa huko Kayole. Nilimaliza class 8 juzi juzi nikaondoka na halama 104. Nikaitwa Bunyore Girls. Pesa wameitisha si rahisi kutukupata na shule zinafunguliwa hivi karibuni na I did KCP and I managed to get 411. I was happy, but I had some stress. But where will the money come for me to, take, to be taken to a national school? Now I just ask for anyone who can see this to bring help for me to go to that national school, Kenya Tahani. Sante sana Nairobi Senator Sakaja Johnson kwa ile support umekama hapo. Jiwe nyee hawa tu wangeza nda kuchuo. Kwa hivyo mimi nashukuru tu sana na ulika at the exact point ile tuko tumefika mwisho. Kwa hivyo si tunashukuru umewapatia kitu ya maana kwa life, education. Kwa hivyo asante Nairobi Senator na God bless. I would like to thank the Nairobi Senator Bwana Sakaja asante sana kwa kutusaidia sababu kama ingekuwa wewe sasa bado tutungekuwa home asante sana super senator Sakaja for the support you've given me and my family hata sasa hivi kasi wewe sasa ningekuwa tu mtahani nimedoze sina cha kufanya tunashukuru kwa vile umetushika mkono nimeshika mkono hasa mimi mwenyewe kama mzazi bali nishindwa nitafanya nini na ningekata 
ndoto za vijana huyu ambaye alipita mtihani wake alifanya bidii yenyewe akapita mtihani wake ninashukuru sana na kujishia shukrani kubwa dhati ambapo umefanya kitu cha maana kitu ambacho ambacho sikuwa nitarajia lakini nakushukuru sana My name is Timothy Ayeko Lingo. I'm the father of Anton Ondenga, who had an accident, who was hit by a motorbike, ran away a motorbike. This is a chisako. This is going to be cold and wet, okay? You good? Mm -hmm. Good. So since I didn't have anything because I stopped working eight years ago, I pleaded with the Honorable Senator Johnson Sakad of Nairobi. I filled some forms in his offices. He told me he was going to take the matter to the CEO of Kenyatta National Hospital. Some officer told me they would be bringing an ambulance to collect the patient to Kenyatta. So the ambulance came with the personnel up to where the boy was staying. Fortunately, they collected the boy. We went up to his offices, switched at KSCC. So, so what does he need now? I think he needs the crutches. Uh -huh. He needs the pain management because he was complaining of another thing. Uh -huh. But I gave him tramadol injection okay. in his house. Uh -huh. He doesn't have any medication. He doesn't have medication? Yeah. I, I think they'll do that with the water. But he still, he still needs the crutches because he cannot move. Uh -huh. All the same. All the same. What's our other leg? Yes. What like Pia ya kuna familia pali na mtegeme. Mm. So zi mzuri ya tiashiku ya fungwe. Mm. But he needs to come and apologize to you. Mm. Kwa zunajua hezi, hezi and do what happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Ata, ata tuki mchukua tumfunge jela. Yeah. Haita za dia mbubu kona. Haita za dia mbubu kona. Asa ya utapata kuna toto wake, familia yake, wana mtegeme. So you know, you don't solve a problem mm. by creating another kufuta. You never find a shida you know. When you have leaders like this one, we have about 10 leaders. Kenya can be a good country. The Honorable Sakaja is an example. He's a very wonderful man. He's very sweet. And he has done something he should be recommended by all in this country. I used to play musical instruments, I used to play the bass guitar. I've been in a few bands actually. I loved music and I picked it up in school. I'd always wanted instruments but I didn't have access. He owned a guitar. I don't know the make because I don't know about musical instruments, but he owned a guitar. Every time the campaign was going on a dive and everyone was stressed, he just held the guitar, put us on the round and stringed the instrument like good poetry on a prose. And that guitar was the music of that campaign. He loves his children. Yo, my name is Tangai Sakaja. Mm -hmm. And my name is Dibi Sakaja. Hey, and I'm Papa Senator Sakaja. And, and we, we are the Sakaja. Seeks to be intentional, drops them. He, yeah. he loves them. That's one thing he. He says to us, uh, we know that he, he loves his family. Hey, so we've got some ideas. For instance, try and keep some social distance. Wash your hands with, with soap, soap and water. Check your temperature if it's getting hotter. I make effort to drop my kids to school every morning. I've made that a tradition because that is the guaranteed time I have. We have a tradition, we get to 
one of the petrol stations and the newspaper guy throws in the newspapers and sometimes you find you're, you're actually on the headline and they ask you what was this dad and I like being the one to explain to them and them not hearing it from uh, their teachers or banter with other kids but they hear it from me whether it is a tough discussion they'll always hear it from me first it helps them with their schoolwork and their grammar and they've been performing very well my boys were number one in a math contest globally uh, just last year and i was very proud i tell them language is the mother of everything once you you can express yourself well it's easier for you to, to pass other other exams and it's what my dad taught me the record i left in lenana in english and math and, and, and physics on math english and physics so has, has never been hit and so i also want them to hit those those records and to get their A's. But if they want to pursue other things, I'll let them pursue other things because I think everyone has been made with a purpose in this life that is different. Mr. Speaker, a country that is at war with its young people is a country that has no future. My people, homeless, thousands of them in Mukuru Kwanjenga, yes, there were feeder roads being done, but they went on and demolished beyond the feeder roads. And you wonder how do you help? How much Mambati do you send? How much food do you send? We don't have oil and gold and our soil, our greatest resource is above the ground. It's our people. Nobody can argue about him being competent. He's a capable and very competent, still young man, and uh, he has a great future ahead of him. Leadership uh, so at the level of governor of uh, a city like Nairobi requires a person with that level of sophistication of mind, but at the same time, able to go down to whatever level. And that is, that's how he is. Sometimes I tend to focus on what has not worked as opposed to what has worked. Uh, Honorable Sakaja is a very positive optimist. He looks always at the positive side of things and pushes through to ensure that things work and things go right. And that way I think it is it's an attitude that uh, I think everybody should try and borrow because it helps you keep positive, it helps you keep energized, it helps you feel that this is the person to be with. Nobody else can say that they understand devolution like Jay does. He wrote it. Decent person with good education, good grounding, and understanding of the issues in Nairobi. I remember Sakaja distinctly because of one always reminding me and us that the mission we are on is not about me, it's not about us. I did not know actually where this young man was headed to in terms of uh, political leadership in our country today. But I was very clear in my heart that he was destined for very great things. He still has that. He has a very big heart for the young people. And what does Sakaja want at the end of the day? Let us return hope to this country. Who would I like most, most like to meet properly? Barack Obama. You know, we've read the books, dreams of my father. We've read what has been put out there, but just one-on-one, -on -one, whether he had fear how he surmounted the challenge of being the first black man to be elected president, how he overcame biases in his life, how he grew up, and what his vision is for even his country, what he thinks about Kenya. Of course, I'd have loved to, meet, to have met Tom Boyer. I drew very many similarities, um, how he was brought up. Part of his political struggle was him being disowned by Luo saying he's not Luo enough. Uh, because he was Suba and the Suba saying he can't speak the language, but he spoke very many languages. He was a young man with promise. He worked closely with uh, President Kenyatta. I uh, also worked closely with President Kenyatta. But when he was very young, um, if you read David Goldsworth's book about him, uh, the man Kenya wanted to forget, you see a leader who had a vision at a very young age. He would be, you know, he got into, into union leadership because at that time, the leaders from the Kiku community had been prevented. And so in his little room in Kaloleni, he had a small leather pouch where he'd collect money to pay Dennis Prit for Kenyatta's uh, legal fees, and he became the treasurer. Um, and the police would barge in and find him with Julius Nyerere, you know, just sharing stories and discussing the promise for this continent. And this guy was in his 20s. When they'd go to discuss the Littleton settlement or the Lennox Boyd constitution, before Lancaster, he'd be put up at the Piccadilly, while others are almost put up in a dormitory. He loved music. He used to walk around with a guitar, which I also used to play music. His interaction with JFK and Martin Luther. He's a man I think would have become Kenya's president. I've read each and every debate he has ever made in parliament. His speeches I've looked for. So I think that is one leader that I, I find a connection, of course. <laughs> I've never met him. Incidentally, in Lenana, I was in Tomboy House. I think that's when my interest in him 
um, side developing because I wanted to know who's this guy who our dormitory is named after. I've done many foolish things. I've been arrested for COVID, flouting rules, and I apologize for that. We made mistakes, we're humans, and I uh, resigned after that. I've made wrong judgment of people, I've trusted the wrong people. And uh, when you start practicing the art of making decisions, many decisions you'll make will be wrong decisions. But make a decision and stick to it, and you'll become better at it as you go. I actually would not place any limits on, on him in future. I think he's good uh, material for leadership. Uh, he will have his opportunity as Nairobi governor to demonstrate that. Then we welcome him uh, to the Council of Governors. I look forward um, to having him as a colleague uh, at the council. <laughs> The joy of a mother is when you see your child progressing, moving from one transition to another. So he's giving a lot of joy to us as, a, as parents. Whenever I see him even debating over the TV, I write a message. Ah, my people, I can see you. I can see you. Keep it up. I always watch TV. I don't hear him being mentioned in corrupt places. I have a lot of hope for my children, a lot of hope, because he's there. He's become a source of hope and inspiration for young people, even my boys at home. He's still focused because he knows at the end of the day, all will not be lost. Don't underestimate him, is what I would say, in terms of what Nairobi can become. Give him time. The majority of Kenyans want to hear about the future. What are you going to do tomorrow? Not the romanticized history of the past. And my vision for Nairobi is a city of order and dignity, hope and opportunities. People with water in their houses, people with, you know, a mass transit system that you can get into and to be in the next place and know there's a train that leaves at 7 that takes me to South Sea by 7.20 every day. That uh, this is the vibe, there's an arts and cultural festival that talks about the spirit of this city. That we can be audacious enough to say this is Africa's capital and let Johannesburg and Lagos fight for that that everybody knows around the world that the place to be in is Nairobi. And that no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, when you have an idea, this would be the city. That is my vision for this city and we will achieve it. We must achieve it. There are those who are skeptical and saying, oh, but there's cartels. Oh, there were the councillors those days, all oh, these MCAs. And I tell them, you have a choice. I choose not to look at Nairobi in terms of what it has always been, but in terms of what it must be. My name is Sakaja Johnson. I'm a Kenyan born in this city. There is no part of this country that is less Kenya.